Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodds and welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about seven little tips and tricks that I think every video editor ought to know. They're just seven things that I find myself using all the time here in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now before we go much further, I just want to let you guys know this video is brought to us by one of our great sponsors, that is Squarespace. If you're in the market for a new website, go over to squarespace.com slash tutvid, sign up for the free trial, and when you're ready to sign up and actually buy a website, use the coupon code tutvid for 10% off. Go ahead and show them some love for showing this channel some love. Whether you need a website, a domain, online store, you name it, why don't you go ahead and make it with Squarespace. With that out of the way, well, make sure you subscribe to my channel, and let's jump into Premiere Pro right now and check this out. Alrighty, so here we are in Premiere. Now, once I have all my video clips placed on my timeline, like you see here, I really like to rip through the editing process while also making sure I take the time to actually preview all of my clips, at least the clips that I've placed on the timeline. Well, by using the J, K, and L keys, we can speed up, slow down, or just pause playing through the footage. I like to hit tap the L button a few times to really ramp up the speed, and I can listen and watch, watch the audio waveform for anything I need to cut out or maybe add graphics graphics for a lower third, any anything that may need to be added to a specific place or anything that I can do to improve a piece of footage. Now quick tip here, you can also hold down shift while tapping L to increase the speed of what you're listening to in smaller increments to find a more exact speed that works well for your editing pace. I find just a quick double tap of L brings me up to like, I don't know if it's one and a half or two X speed, but it's just right. It's fast enough that I'm blowing through it, uh, but not so fast that I can't understand what I'm saying. So find a pace that works for you. Um, and it can say you some serious time. Now, if you start playing through so quickly that you, you lose track of things, you can hit the J button to slow yourself down, and this will actually eventually play in reverse as well if you need to get back to something you played past and it's just the fastest way at that given uh, point in time. And of course, hitting letter K will pause the video altogether, and then hitting L once will just continue playing the video at normal speed. So, I highly recommend play with the J, K, and L keys when you're playing through your footage. It will save you so much time and help you produce better quality videos because you won't need to take as much agonizing, painstaking time to watch through all of your clips just at 1x speed. Why not go 2 or 3x when you've got the option? All right, and the second thing I want to talk about, this is one of my favorite tricks for making fast edits while I'm playing through a video very, very quickly, and that is dropping an in and out point using the hotkeys I to drop the in point and O to drop the out point, and this is going to sort of select a portion of your timeline. Then I simply hit the apostrophe key to extract that targeted selection of footage and will automatically ripple delete the footage back to ensure there's no gap left in your footage. You can even lock a track like my independent music track here that's not necessarily part of the video. I don't want it to be cut, I don't want it to be affected by the extraction. Well, lock it and it won't be uh, affected by the extraction. This is such a fast and easy way to edit edit audio and video together. If it's spoken word and you have a pause in your video, in, out, boom, apostrophe, and the gap is gone. It is so fast and so easy and so amazing. Let me interrupt this broadcast for one quick moment here and remind you guys that Squarespace is bringing us this video today. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this video, for choosing to sponsor this video, this channel, the whole bit. Squarespace, guys, they provide the most beautiful and easy-to-use websites that you can have set up and running in no time flat. If you want a portfolio, a blog, a full e-commerce store, or all of those things, you can do it quickly and easily with Squarespace. I've had my own personal photography site on Squarespace for a few years. I love it. It's fast. It's easy. It's a total breeze when I need to update it. Go to squarespace.com slash tutvid for a free trial, no credit card needed, and when you're ready to launch your website, use the code TUTVID to save 10% on your first website. Check them out, show them some love. Thank you Squarespace for helping support this channel, sponsor this channel, and all the good stuff you do for us. Thank you so much. Guys, that's it. Let's get back into the video. All right, on to the third thing. Uh, this is the add edit hotkey and also adjusting the ripple delete hotkey. So in addition to my sort of in out extract video cutting workflow, I've also gone ahead and added, well really changed, the only two hotkeys that I've that I've customized at all in Premiere Pro. And these allow me for super fast editing as well. It all kind of just depends on my mood and how I feel like editing. Here I'm gonna open up my keyboard shortcut editor. It's under the Premiere Pro menu for the Mac users, but under the edit menu for uh, PC Windows users. Uh, in here, I'm going to use the little search field to find the add edit function and I'm going to assign the letter Z as the hotkey for this command and then I will go ahead and search for a ripple delete and for this I'm going to set the hotkey to X. We have now armed ourselves with a pretty nice duo of commands. 
Now, whenever we need to cut out a chunk of video, simply hit the letter Z to slice all the clips wherever the play hit is at that very moment. Then play forward to wherever you need your second cut. And once you've made your two cuts, Premiere will default to select the earlier of the two clips, which is going to happen to be the clip that we want to delete. And now that this clip is active, we can use that hotkey that we just customized right conveniently next to the letter Z, the letter X. Tap X, it will ripple delete to delete that clip and close the gap in seconds. Another very, very fast hotkey. And you can play around with targeting tracks, which we're going to talk about in a second, to give yourself even more power when you're playing around uh, with the add edit function. So that moves us, uh, segues us beautifully here into tip number four, and that is targeting tracks uh, and alt clicking. So it can be tricky to copy and paste video clips or elements from one part of your project to another because when you paste the clip in, it will seem like the clip just randomly, uh, randomly pasted pastes anywhere. And usually it's right where you don't want it to go. We can solve this problem by targeting tracks. You click on that little label V1 or V2 to target that track or you can target multiple tracks at the same time and then click on any of the tracks to sort of deselect or detarget them, untarget them maybe would be the proper term. So I can copy a piece of video onto my clipboard here and I'll deselect the main track and select V3 or something far above my current video track and now when I paste the copied video clip in, notice how it gets pasted up onto that targeted track and not any of the lower non-targeted tracks. Like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, we can also use this method when we're using the add edit technique that we talked about. Uh, so I can target a couple tracks here. I can hit the letter Z and see that only the clips on the targeted tracks get cut. So I can target all the tracks. All the clips will get cut when I hit the letter Z. And I could also just straight drag a selection over the clips that I want to cut. And when I hit Z, only the selected pieces of video will be cut. So a lot of different ways you can go here with targeting and messing around uh, with, with your clips and the way you're editing them, especially with that add edit tool. It's just something where it sounds complicated, kind of because it is a little bit. But the more you edit and play around with this stuff, it really, honestly, it makes a lot of sense and becomes pretty simple. Now, a quick pro tip here. If both audio and video automatically get selected together when you're trying to select only audio or only video, you can just hold down your Alt or Option key and click either the audio or video track to choose only that, and you can make adjustments to it that way. All right, on to number five, reduce monitor quality for less lag. Sometimes when you're using a lot of effects or doing heavy color corrections or color grading, uh, or maybe you just flat out have a slow computer, right? We all have a slow computer at some point. We might need to upgrade, but we just haven't yet. Uh, the preview monitor will really lag. Premiere will slow down and lag. Uh, to help Premiere cope a little bit, you can reduce the quality of your preview to speed things up a little bit. So use this little drop down menu over here, kind of on the right hand side of the preview monitor, and choose, you know, a quarter or an eighth or whatever, maybe the lowest you can go is. Once you do that, you should have a much better time playing through video, albeit at a lower quality in the preview uh, than that of, you know, a super high quality, maybe proper preview render. But hey, it's a fast way to change the speed at which Premiere is going to work for you. And it can be really nice. It can certainly alleviate some frustration. Let's talk about number six here, locking tracks to ripple delete everything else. So when you start building out more complex projects and video edits, you'll have multiple tracks and all kinds of stuff stacked all over the place. If I'm digging the location of certain objects, maybe a graphic, a video clip, a sound, a lower third, something like that, it's in place on my timeline. It's a good idea to lock those layers up because when I lock those layers up, I can ripple delete or slide clips around and allow my whole timeline to react and shift and slide and perform totally independent of those locked clips. Lock the layers that you don't want shifting around before you start doing heavy editing and deleting or certainly ripple deleting. It'll just help kind of hold things in place. Like I mentioned earlier, we can perform an in-out edit here and if I just lock up my audio track, I can go in, I can go out, I can extract my video and my sound never moves. Just imagine you drop in a lower third that identifies somebody and then you realize, oh, I need to cut a small part of the video and adjust some things. Mm, well, by just locking that lower third track in place, you don't worry about moving it and pushing it around and knocking your whole video edit out of whack. Okay, let's move along to the seventh and final simple trick that I think every editor should know. Certainly, it's something that I use all the time and that is not just adjusting volume, but adjusting audio gain. So the audio gain of your track, the gain is the input into the track, whereas the volume is just the output. I like to mess around with the gain when possible. So for our video clip here, the audio is low, and even boosting the audio in the effect controls panel only allows us to push the volume to six decibels. So how can we push really quiet audio up quickly and easily while not destroying the quality of our audio? Well, as I mentioned a moment ago, the secret lies in the audio gain feature. So if you right click on an audio clip in the timeline and choose audio gain, you're going to get the audio gain dialog box. 
I almost always, generally speaking, almost always will tick on the adjust gain buy option and then punch in a number that I like. How do you know what number is appropriate to punch in? Well, the secret lies in the audio monitor in your Premiere interface. Most people would agree that it's a good idea to keep the, the absolute loudest noises around 6 dB uh, negative 6 dB, that is, at all times. A lot of TV, Netflix broadcast dialogue, like spoken word, is generally around the negative 12 dB level. So, again, everything doesn't have to be flattened at negative 6 dB exactly. Just, you know, if you're, if you're spiking up past that, you're probably, on it like a global level, going to be slightly louder than most other videos and things like that. But if you're between negative 12 and negative 3 dB, let's say, you're probably in a pretty good range. But you can play with it and tweak it and see what works for you. For YouTube, personally, I like to keep my levels around negative 6 dB. I'd say that my voice level floats anywhere between negative 6 and negative 12, depending on how much mic discipline I have and how consistently I keep my speaking pattern, you know, how close to the microphone and things like that that I am as well. But it's certainly something that you can play around with and see what works for you. But just know that that audio monitor is so helpful. It will ensure that you don't upload a video to YouTube and it's 20 decibels quieter for everybody in the world because you keep your speakers cranked up to, you know, level 1000. That's going to be pretty much it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Picked up a few tips and tricks along the way that are going to help your filmmaking, your vlogging, your YouTube videos, whatever it is you're doing with that video camera. So for a better audio gain stuff and less video lagginess and cutting and chopping and in and out and extraction, stuff like that, guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.